This is Film Masters, and we're working on Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 Masterclass. This is the introduction screen. This is the very first screen that you will see. Let's have a look at the main features here. First of all, we can start a new project. We can open up a project like a pre-existing one. And if you want some help, that folder's there too. But we're going to go in and we're going to start a brand new project. So let's do that. First of all, let's name it. So I'm just going to call this Masterclass. The next thing we're going to have a look at is all this information down here. You have the video display format. Now we're going to leave that as times code. So just leave that the way it is. Audio samples. We're going to leave these exactly the way it is as well. When it comes to the capture format, HDV is fine. Now this is only used if you're recording, for example, DV or HDV cassettes from an old camcorder. So again, we're going to leave that as it is. Now, wherever you want to leave the file location, I've got a special file location set up on my hard drive, and that's in Film Masters Premiere Pro Cache. I suggest that you find a location somewhere in your C drive to put the folder so that all these saved projects will, will be saved into. And to do that, obviously, you just select Browse. In the scratch disks, we're going to leave everything the way it is as well. We're not going to go in there and change anything. So once you've done that, select OK. Now the next screen that opens is our new sequence screen. This is where we're going to figure out what size our end product is going to be. Now, I do film in 24 frames a second. So I'm going to go into HDV. I'm going to select HDV 1080-24. And I'm going to leave the sequence as sequence one. Now you can call it whatever you'd like, but I always leave that as sequence one as it is. Now let's go to settings. In the settings, we've got it at 1080. Frame rate 23.976, which is the real frame rate of 24 frames a second. 14 by 40 by 1080. Okay. Now we can change this down here. So if you've got a different format that you'd like to use, if you can't find it in this folder here, these presets, then I suggest you make it here. And it's a custom preset. So 14 by 40 by 1080 is the size we're using. Let's select maximum bit depth. Now setting the optimized render is memory intensive. So just be cautious of that. So for now, we're gonna not select it. And again, with the maximum render quality. Now, the thing is when we render out, we're gonna be selecting these anyway. So it's probably best not to select them. And if you wanna call it something completely different, if you make a unique one, for example, I may wanna call this YouTube because it'll be my YouTube format. I can do that and save it as a preset. And once you're happy with that, let's select OK. Now, we are now in Premiere Pro. So I'm just going to move some of the stuff around because obviously I move it around because I do a lot of editing in this program. So we're going to have a look at the breakdown of all the screens that we have here. And then we're going to go through a lot of the tools that are in it. So over here, we see the project panel. Now, the project panel is where all the sound, the video, the images, anything that you import into Premiere Pro is located here. Now, this is the same location where, for example, if we move this window out, as you can see, we can resize it. You can have a look, you can zoom in, uh, you can do a new item. You can even open up and place a new folder there. And if you have a lot of media there, you can obviously zoom in and zoom out. Now, beforehand, when I called it sequence one, this is where sequence one is. So if you want to get creative, of course, you can go in there and call it whatever you'd like. It doesn't have to be sequence one and it will open up here. So first of all, let's have a look at importing something. So there's two ways to do that. One, you can double click in here. There's a video here. I'm going to select that and select open. And it's going to import it. And as you can see, we've got the video here. Another way is to go file. And we're going to go uh, import and we can find another file, for example, and bring that in. So at the moment, we've got two files in Premiere. Thing is, nothing has been edited yet. So think of this in old terms as the bin. This is where your film is. So let's have a look first of all. I wanna see what this video is. So to do that, let's double click on it. 
And what you'll notice is in the preview window, we can see a few different things in here that can assist us in doing some editing. So first of all, this is me obviously in the room that you're probably all aware of based on all my other tutorials. But to do some editing, let's have a look. So we can scrub through the video footage like so. We can adjust the resolution. So I'm using high definition at 4K. That's my video format that I'm filming in. So if I want to break it down so that the resolution's a little bit less, I can do it that way. And that way allows me to scrub through it quicker. Where I can adjust it to full. And as you can see, the computer is not as responsive as it was beforehand. I'm just going to drop it down to quarter. I'm happy with the, the rate. Now I'm going to press the space bar. By pressing the space bar, you'll be able to see that everything plays in real time. Now let's say, for example, let's do an edit for the opening sequence to one of my tutorials. So just as I'm about to talk, I'm going to use the forward and backward keys on my keyboard. And I'm going to start here. So let's do a cut in or a mark in. So Premiere Pro is telling me the correct terminology. Let's select it. And as you can see, when I do that, everything in this location has been selected. Now, here's something that I need to show you. When we're importing a video file straight onto the timeline, if the footage is different to the original setup that we set up, it's going to give us a mismatch warning. Now, what it's telling me, and always leave it ticked as always, so what it's telling me is that the video that I'm bringing in, which is at 4K, is not at the 1440 by 1080 size that we originally set it up as. And that's okay, because what we're gonna do is resize the video footage on the timeline anyway. But to do that, I'm gonna have a look here. I'm gonna leave, keep existing settings. Now, if I change the sequence settings, it will change the video format to 4K. Now we don't wanna do that, so let's keep the existing settings. And as you can see, when I dropped it in at the existing settings that I already had set up, the 4K image is so large in that space that a lot of the footage that you can see from here has been cut away. But that's okay, we can resize that. But first of all, I just wanna show you this window. Sorry about this, I got a little bit sidetracked. So let's have a look at trimming it. So let's press play within this uh, preview window. So I've got the sound turned down so you don't hear it at the moment, but I know that's when I stop talking. So when I stop talking, let's do a go in, go out. Let's move that out. Let's use a mark out. So as you can see, it's cut in that area. Now here's something that you may not be aware of. I'm just gonna delete this footage down here. I just selected and pressed the delete button on my keyboard. If I grab the video footage, as you've seen before, I can drag it down. However, let's say for example, I don't want the sound. I can select this drag video only and bring it down. And as you can see, let's keep the existing settings. As you can see, the video does not have any sound there. Now watch this. If I only want the sound from the video, I can do the same just by dragging the audio into the audio area. So that is how we use the preview window. So again, we can play it. We can go back one step at a time. And by pressing this button here, I could be all the way at the end and go, you know what, I'm just gonna, I wanna scrub back to the, this point here. I can select that and automatically would jump straight there. Something else that you might be interested in, this button here, if I select it, I can call it whatever I want, find the location of where I want the file to go, it will take a screen capture for me. Now that's really good if you're doing visual effects or if you wanna extend something. For example, there might be something that you're editing and you wanna freeze frame it for a period of time and you don't want to, and then you can actually import that screen capture into the timeline. So that's the preview window. Also located, we have the effects. So if I select the video, you'll see things like the motion appear. So we can adjust the position, the scale, rotation. It's very similar to Adobe After Effects, except some of the panels are in different locations. Also got some audio mixing channels here, which is really good. Now, the reason for this is, let's say, for example, I'm on video one. I can uh, select video one, record. And when I select this button here, it will then start playing and recording. So if I have a microphone like I do have set up, 
then I'll be able to record voiceover. And I do that on the tutorials. And that's selecting just that one audio file. Now the thing is, we can have multiple audio and multiple video tracks. So that's the effects control panel and where the audio mixer is. Now over here, we have the main project window. In this is whatever we're editing, this is what the final product will look like. So let's just open this up a little bit more. Now we've got the same controls. We've got the mark in, mark out. The same jumping forward or scrubbing forward and scrubbing back buttons. We can also take a still image, including all the text that we may have applied to it. We can take that still image of that screen. The other window that we've got down here, we've got a media browser. So if you wanna search through uh, your hard drives on your computer, you can have a look and see what's located there. On your effects, you have different presets. So audio effects, video effects. So you can do transparencies, color correction, stuff like that. And here we have a little bar here and I'll just slide this across. And this is markers. So if I'm putting markers in there for a DVD authorization, so or, or DVD author, because I wanna put in markers because I wanna put chapters into the DVD, then they'll show up here. Another thing we've got is a history. So anything that we do, we can delete or go back on in the history. So if you use Adobe Photoshop, you would be aware that there's a history panel there that allows you to find a mark in time and delete it or jump back to. As you can see, there's nine undos here at the moment. Now watch what happens when I drag the video on to the timeline. Once I've done that, it's put another override on there in the history. So this is the most recent action. If I selected it and then deleted it, are you sure you wanna delete? Yes. As you can see, it deleted that action. So I could jump in here and delete something out of the actual history if I wanted to, but we're not gonna do that. Not many people use a history, but it's good if you're doing something and you realize, damn, I've done something I shouldn't have done before. I'm unhappy with it. You can go back to that original point in time and start again. So I'm gonna leave the effects open and we're gonna jump straight into the timeline. But before we do, let's have a look at the tools. The tools are located here. Now you can move the toolbar around if you want to. It's exactly the same as uh, any other Adobe program. I'm gonna leave where it is because I'm happy with it. In fact, I use shortcuts on my keyboard and believe it or not, you don't have to use all these tools. I only use a few of them, believe it or not. It really depends on what you're wanting to do. But the more you start to use these tools, the more you start to learn, the more you're obviously gonna start doing them. And finally, we've got, I'll just bring this up. And this is our timeline. So anything that we cut, think of this old fashioned wise. You're sitting there cutting film up like you did in the old days and you're running it through a light projector. This is what that is. However, it's a lot more quicker to edit something in this respect. So let's have a look. Whenever you put a video onto the timeline, I'm gonna select one of the videos up here again. When you drop it down, as you can see, you can actually choose video three to one, for example. And the audio generally is in parallel with the footage, as you can see. And you can move it where anywhere else you want on the timeline. But let's delete that anyway. This, this here is anything that you put on the timeline, this is where the render render queue is. So if you use After Effects, you know that this is, uh, for example, if you uh, press N or B on your keyboard in After Effects, um, that's the uh, work area in which it, it renders out to. So if you've got a video footage here, for example, and you've got another one over here, you always gotta make sure that this here covers the whole area of where you're editing. Otherwise, when you render it out, it won't render out that part of the video but that's something that we'll cover as well. You have the magnetic tool, I can turn that off, but by turning it off, it means nothing snaps together. If I turn the magnetic snap tool on, you'll see it clicks. It's a lot easier and, and assists in speeding up the workflow. Now this is for setting encore chapters for DVD authoring. We're not gonna be using that. And the same here for the added marker. We're not gonna be using that either. Like After Effects, I can toggle the image on and off, so that track. For sound, I can turn that track sound on and off while I'm editing. It's really good if I've got like three or four different audio tracks going at the same time. I might have a background and my voiceover. A lot of the time when I'm doing my voiceover work, I'll turn off the track that has the background music on it. So that's the timeline. Over here is just the bar that shows you the sound coming in uh, as being played. So if I press the space bar, you'll see as I'm talking, the sound, and if it hits up here and hits red, it generally indicates that it's peaking, but we'll cover that later. So that is the basics 
of importing a video into Premiere Pro CS6 and having a look at all the screens that we can see located here. And that is episode one of Adobe's Premiere Pro CS6 Masterclass. Now, if you wanna become a Film Master subby, it's pretty simple. Just simply subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook and or on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master it. Thank <laughs> you.